What's going on guys? This is me Mehdi Shakil and you are watching SS Tech Tutorials. So guys from today I am going to start a new series of Kali Linux basic. In this particular video series I am going to cover from the basic of Kali Linux what you should know about and if you want to start your career in infosec or cyber security. If you already know the basic about Linux and especially about Kali Linux then also I will suggest you to follow this video series. Because if you had any loophole in your basic, then after completing this video series, you can fill up those loopholes. I am going to cover almost everything about Kali Linux and those stuff which gonna help you to make your basic stronger. In this video series, you will learn about all the basic command and useful keyboard shortcuts which gonna speed up your task in Kali Linux. Also I will cover file manipulation, networking, permission, piping, process management, proxy chain, and more about basic Kali Linux tools usage. I hope you will all enjoy and learn a lot from this video series. So guys, that's all for this introduction part. Get yourself into Kali Linux machine without any kinds of installation. Kali Linux team and offensive security team provide pre-installed Kali Linux VMR machine which is fully configured to use. Now let me show you practically how you can get yourself into Kali Linux. First of all, open up your browser. Then search on Google for VMware. Then click on VMware Workstation Pro and it will take you to the download page of the VMware Workstation. Now click on download under the VMware Workstation 60 Pro download for Windows. Here. Then it will start downloading the VMware Workstation. Now go to your download folder and double click on VMware installer and it will start installing the VMware on your computer. Accept the terms and condition and complete the installation process. Now we need to download the Kali Linux VM files from Offensive Security website. Again, go to your browser, then navigate to kali.org. This is the official Kali Linux website. Now click on download and this page you will get various type of Kali Linux ISO files. Ignore all of them for now and scroll down. And here you will find the Kali Linux 64 bit VMware files. Now click here and it will redirect you to the offensive security website. Now from this page click on VMware image and it will start downloading. If your computer architecture is 32 bit then you can download 32 bit files. I have 64 bit architecture so I need these 64 bit files. Also you can use torrent client to download this file if you have slower internet speed. Now go to the downloaded folder where you downloaded the Kali VMware files. Now right click on it and copy that file. Then go to your document folder and here you will find a folder called virtual machine. Go into that folder and here paste the Kali VM zip file. Now unzip the file using WinRAR or 7zip. Now you can delete the zip file or I will suggest you to store it on your hard drive for later use. Now close the window. Then click on start menu and search for VMware and click on it to open. Now click on open a virtual machine on VMware and browse to the document virtual machine folder. Then go into Kali Linux folder and select this file and click on open. Now it will open the Kali Linux machine into VMware workstation. Now power on the virtual machine and it will run Kali Linux on your computer virtually. Then 
the default username for login is Kali and the password also Kali. Now you are in Kali Linux. Now we can go further in our next video. If you are new, go play with it. Look around into the OS. Don't worry, if anything goes wrong, just replace the files of virtual machine folder using the downloaded zip file and you will get a new fresh Kalinux machine again. So guys, that's all for this video part. To sum up very useful Kali Linux keyboard shortcut that going to make your task of using Kali Linux very efficient. Now in Linux operating system, one of the most important thing is the terminal. If you want to be a professional in Linux operating system, then you must have to know using the Linux terminal. Because using the terminal, you can perform every task first up then graphical user interface mode. So our first shortcut is about opening the terminal. On your keyboard, press Ctrl Alt T together to open the terminal window. Please ignore any command I type on terminal for now, otherwise you will get confused. I will make details video about the commands. Just follow me. On keyboard shortcut, try with me, just press Ctrl Alt T and you will open a new terminal window. Using this command, you can take multiple windows. And using the super key plus arrow key on your keyboard, you can change the location of your window. Like this. Now our next shortcut is to take new tab on single terminal. On your keyboard, press Ctrl Shift T to open a new tab on a single terminal. You can also take multiple terminal tab using this command. Ok, now let me show you how to close the terminal tab and the terminal window itself. On your keyboard, press Ctrl Shift W to close the tabs and the terminal window. Now whenever we use our terminal for various command, the terminal get full of text. So we have to clear the text every time we need. There is two methods to do it. One is using command and another using keyboard shortcut. On your keyboard, press Ctrl L and it will clear your full terminal. Now our next keyboard shortcut is used to increase the font size of our terminal. By default, the text size of our terminal is very small. To increase the font size of the terminal, there is a keyboard shortcut. On your keyboard, press Ctrl Shift and the plus sign and it will increase the size of your text on your terminal. And to decrease the font size, just press Ctrl Shift and minus sign. Our next shortcut is about closing the running process. Let me show you this too. Here using this ping command, I am pinging to my router. To close or end this process or any process, just on your keyboard press Ctrl C and it will end the process. Also you can pause any process using the Ctrl Z command. Now next keyboard shortcut is about autocomplete. Linux terminal is very much intelligent. If you type half of any command, then use the shortcut, then it will auto-complete your command. And not only this, it also show you all the possible command what you might want to use. Let me show you. Let's say I want to change my directory. If I type cd to change directory, then slash e and press the tab key, then it will auto-complete the command for me. Also if I press tab key two times, it will show me all the possible command what I can use. Now next shortcut is very useful. Just press arrow key up and down and it will navigate to previous command whatever we used before in terminal. Terminal remember all of this command. Using all of this shortcut, you can use Kali Linux very efficiently. So guys, that's all for this video part. Basic command for file management, directory management and manipulation. So, power on your Kalinux VM machine and open up the terminal. Use the keyboard shortcut which I show you in previous video. Now let's start with knowing the terminal basic. Once you launch the terminal, you would find something like this, Kali at the red Kali, then semicolon on terminal. 
the first part of this line is the name of the user and it's Kali. By seeing this, you can identify the current user of the OS. Then the second part Kali is the computer name or host name. The host name helps to identify a computer over the network. In a server environment, host name is very much important. The semicolon is a simple separator and the tile sign show that the user in the home directory. If we change our directory, then this style will vanish. And this dollar sign suggests that you are working as a regular user in Linux. If we change our user to root, this sign will be changed in hash sign. If you don't know what is root user, then you can assume it as an administration privilege user of Windows operating system. Ok, now we know the terminal better than before. Now we can go to the basic command. To see your current working directory, we can use pwd command. Type pwd on your terminal and hit enter. And it will show you your current working directory. pwd stands for present working directory. Now to change our directory to another place or let's say if we want to go from one folder to another folder, we use cd commands. Let's say I want to go into a folder named tmp or temp. So I will type on terminal cd slash and the folder name and it will change my directory to that folder. Now again if we use pwd command here, you will see our directory is changed. Now to go back to previous directory, just type cd and put two dots and hit enter and it will take you back to the previous directory. Also, if you want to navigate to the home directory from any directory, just use cd with this still sign and it will take you directly to the home directory. Now to see that what are the files and folder any directory has, you can just use ls command. ls stands for list. Type ls and you will see the subfolder and files of your current directory. Directories are denoted in blue color and files are denoted in white colors. With this ls command, we can use so many attributes. Like if you use ls then space then dash r command, then it will show you all the file, not only directory, also the subdirectory. And if you want to see every single information in details, just use ls with the dash l attribute. Now we will learn how to create any file. There is a command called cat. This command basically used for display any text file. But also you can use it to create, to create a file. And here I type cat, then this greater than sign and the file name. Now it will create a file on your desktop like this. You can write anything here on terminal. Then press on your keyboard Ctrl D to save and exit. And if we again use the cat command with the file name, then it will display the text that file contains. To delete any file, we use rm command. rm stands for remove. Let's say now we want to delete the file what we create, then just simply type rm and the file name and hit enter and it will delete that file. Now to create any folder, we use mkdir command. mkdir command stands for make directory. Let's say we want to create a folder. So we type on terminal mkdir and give the folder name and hit enter. And this command will create a folder on our desktop. To delete that folder, simply use rm command with the dash r attribute and it will delete that folder. Now let's see how we can use terminal for copy and move. Let's create a folder and one file. Now I am going to copy this file into folder 1. So I have to type cp, the file name and the directory name. And it will copy that file into the folder. cp stands for copy. Now if you go to that folder and type ls, 
and you can see the file is copied into that folder. Now let's delete the file and now we are going to move the file from the desktop to folder. So we will use mv command. mv stand for move. Type mv then the file name and the folder name where you want to move that file. Now if we go to that folder 1, you can see the file is moved into the folder 1. So guys, that's all for this video part. Every file and directory on Kali Linux system is assigned three types of owner. First we have user. A user is the owner of the file. By default, the person who created the file becomes its owner. Hence a user is also sometimes called an owner. Then we have group. A user group can contain multiple users. All users belong to a group and will have the same access permission to a file. And in number 3 we have other. Any other user who has access to a file. This person has neither created the file nor he belongs to a user group who could own the file. Ok, now can you tell me how does Linux differ between those three types of user? And here comes the permission so that one user cannot modify or see other user files and information. Every file and directory in Kalinux system has three type of permissions, read, write and execute. Read permission gives you the authority to open and read a file and write permission gives you the authority to modify the content of a file. Now execution permission. We all know in Windows, an executable program usually has an extension .exe and which you can easily run it by double click. But in Kali Linux, you cannot run a program unless the execution permission is set. If the execution permission is not set, you might still be able to see or modify the program code, but you cannot run it. Now it's time for practical. Open up your terminal using the shortcut what I told you in previous video. And now type here ls with the dash l attributes. Now let me zoom in. And here on terminal you will see this weird looking code. This is the one that tell us about the permission give to the owner, user group and others. Here the first D implies that we have selected a directory. If it were a files, then here you will see this dash sign, like this. The characters are pretty easy to remember. R stands for read permission, W stands for write permission, and X stands for execute permission. And this minus sign stands for no permission. Now let's run how to change or set the permission. Using chmod command, we have to set or change any type of permission. Also to change or set permission, we need to remember a simple table. Here on the screen, we have to remember this table. We can set permission for a file or directory using the number or the symbolic sign. Now let's see practically how to change the permission or set the permission. So now tell me do you remember how we can create a file? Yes, that using a cat command, right? Now let's create a simple bash file. Now if we type ls-l and with the file name whatever we created, you can see the file permission. So by default I am the owner of this file. So I have the access to read and write. But you can see here I don't have the execution permission. So if I want to give it every single permission for user, groups and others, then I have to type this command. Sage mode. Then I have to type 764, the numbers. You can easily understand by seeing the number on the table, what I am going to do. Then I need to type the file name. 764 absolute code says that owner can read write and execute, user group can read and write 
another can only read. This is how you can change the permission on a file by assigning the absolute number. Now if I again type ls with the l attribute and the file name whatever you created. Now you can see we have now the permission to execute. So like this you can easily set permission for any particular files or folders. So guys that's all for this video part. Today in this video we are going to learn using grip, pipe and short command. Those three commands are most useful command in Kali Linux. Now let's start with the pipe command. Open up your Kali Linux VM. The pipe is a command in Linux that let you use two or more commands such that output of one command serve as an input to the next command. In short, the output of each process directly use as input to the next process like a pipeline and this symbol denotes a pipe. Pipe help you mash up two or more commands at the same time and run them consecutively. Let us understand with this an example. Here I have a file that contains some text. If we want to view the text what we did before, we use cat command like this cat and file name. But there is a problem with this. Whenever you use cat command, the prompt quickly jump to the last of the file and you do not see the content in the middle. To avoid this, you can use pipe command with the cat, which will show you only one scroll length of content at a time. Now let's try cat command with grip command. Type cat, then the file name, and after that put a pipe sign and type less and hit enter. Now it will show you one scroll length content. And now using arrow key, you can navigate through the output. And if you reach to the end, then press Q on your keyboard to exit. Also you can use PZ and more with this pipe command. Now we are going to learn grip command. Grip command is also very useful to search for a text portion or get some specific information from a file. Using the grip command, you can scan a text file and get customized result from the search. Let's see an example. Here in this file, we have some kind of text. And let's say we are going to search this text using the grip command from outside of this file. So the command will be cat, then the file name, then give a pipe sign. And after that, type grip, then type the text what you are looking for and hit enter. And it will provide the output based on your search string. Now let's use sort command. This command help us sorting the file's content in alphabetically or reverse order. Let's try this with the same file. On your terminal, you need to type sort and the file name and hit enter. Now this command will sort the file contents alphabetically. It sorted alphabetically. Also you can reverse it with the dash r attributes. Ok, now it is the time to show you the main thing for what I make this video part. And this is about using multiple commands at once using the pipe and use one common output as the next common input. Let's see an example. I am going to use the same file for it. Here I am going to print from this file. So I will type cat and the file name. Then I will put a pipe sign so that I can use another command. Now let's say I want to print those text which does not contain small letter a. So I will type here grip then dash v and a small letter a. Then I will put another pipe sign. And now I want to sort the output in alphabetical order. For this I will type sort. And hit enter. Now this command will give me the output from that file which doesn't contain small letter a in alphabetically short order. In this way you can use multiple command using this pipe. So guys, that's all for this video part. In this video, we'll talk about what is process, type of processes, 
and some processes management command like FG, TOP, PS, Skill and more. Let's go to our Kalinux machine. So what is process? An instance of a program is called a process. In simple terms, any command that you give to your Linux machine that start a new process. You can have multiple processes for the same program. For a basic example, let's we run a ping to my router. And now this is a process. And I can run multiple ping process at a time. Basically there are two type of process. Foreground and background processes. Foreground processes run on the screen and it need input from the user. For example, you can take an office program. And background process run in background and usually do not need user input. And for this example, you can take an antivirus. Antivirus always run in background. Now we understand the process. Now let's see the process management command. First, let's run a simple print process. Okay. Now what I teach you in keyboard shortcut video, did you remember it? How to pause any process? You need to press Q on keyboard to pause any process. Now this process is paused. Now to again continue this process, there is a command FG. Using this process command, we can continue the process again. Type on your terminal FG and the process name. And now you can see the process is continued. Ok, now let's see another command which are very useful for process management. And that is top command. On your terminal, type top and hit enter. And this utility show us all the running process on the Linux machine. Now if you want to stop any process, you just need the PID of that process. And you need to run kill command with the process ID or PID. And it will kill or stop the process. Now we have another command to check the status of any process. And that is PS command. This command stands for process status. It is similar to the task manager that pop up in Windows machine when you use Ctrl Alter Delete key. So guys, that's all for this video part. Communication commands of Kali Linux. While working on Linux operating system, you may need to communicate with other device or other operating system. And for this, there are some basic utility that you can make use of. This utility can help you to communicate with other network, other Linux operating system and remote users. Those utilities are SSH, Ping, FTP and Telnet. In this video, we are going to learn about them. Follow me. Go to your Linux machine. Now let's start with SSH. SSH which stands for Secure Cell. It is used to connect to a remote computer securely compared to Telnet. SSH is a secure where in the client or server connection is authenticated using a digital certificate and passwords are encrypted. It is widely used by the system administrator to control remote Linux server. The command to log into remote Linux machine using SSH is on your terminal type SSH then the username of the remote system then at the rate and the IP address of the system. Now hit enter. Then it will ask you to enter the password. Once you are logged in, you can execute any command to that remote system from your terminal. Now let's see the ping command. The ping command is commonly used to check whether your connection to the server is healthy or not. This command is also used for analyzing network and host connection, tracking network performance and managing it and testing hardware and software issues. The command of using ping is on your terminal, type ping, then put the target IP address or hostname and hit enter. Here a system has sent byte data packet to the IP address of the hostname. If even one of the data packet does not return or lost, it would suggest an error in the connection. Usually internet connectivity is checked using this command. Now let's see the FTP command. FTP stands for File Transfer Protocol. It's the most preferred protocol for data transfer amongst computer. You can use FTP login and establish a connection with a remote host to upload and download files and also navigate through the directory. The command to establish the FTP connection to a remote host is on your terminal, type FTP, then put the target IP address or host name and hit enter. Once you enter the command, it will ask you for authentication via username and password. 
once a connection is established and you are logged in you may use the command to perform different action whatever i show in my directory management and manipulation video part now it's time for telnet telnet is same like ssh but less secure telnet helps to connect to a remote linux computer and run program remotely and conduct administration this utility is similar to remote desktop feature found in windows machine the command for this utility is telnet and the host name okay now we all know about the basic communication command now it's time for a quick wrap up secure communication between linux and other different computer networks and remote user is possible using the ssh utilities the ping command check whether the connection with a host name or ip address is working or not ftp is preferred protocol for sending and receiving large files you can establish an ftp connection to a remote host and then use command for uploading downloading files and also you can browse through the directories telnet utility help you to connect to a remote linux computer and work on it so guys that's all for this video boy. today in this video you are going to learn about all the network related commands and usage of them like if config net state route and more so further ado let's start the video open up your kalinux machine first of all we have if config if config stands for interface configuration it is used to view and change the configuration of the network interface of a system in newer version linux if config is not pre-installed to install it you need to type on your terminal a command so open up your terminal and type sudo apt-get install netools this command going to install the if config on your kalinux machine okay now let's see in details about the if config command if I type if config and hit enter, then it will display information about all the network interface currently in operation on your system. Here ETS0, LO and WLAN0 are the name of the active interface of your system. ETS0 is the fast ethernet adapter or fast ethernet interface. If you add additional internet interface, it would be named as ETS1, ETS2 and etc. This type of interface is usually is a NIC connected to the network by a CAT5 cable. LO is the loopback interface. This is a special network interface that the system used to communicate with itself. WLAN0 is the name of the fast wireless network interface on your system. And if you add additional wireless interface, it will be named as WLAN1, WLAN2 and it will be going like this. Now, to view the configuration of a specific interface, you can specify its name like this. sudo if config. Then I'll mention the ETS0 for Ethernet interface configuration. And it will show me the first Ethernet configuration only. Like this, you can specifically show any interface information WLAN0, WLAN2, loopback, and any other interface. Okay. Now let's see the enable and disabling an interface. When a network interface is active, it can send and receive data. And when it is inactive, it is not able to transmit or receive. You can use ifconfig to change the network status interface from inactive to active or active to inactive. To disable an interface, type sudo ifconfig, then the interface name and type down and hit enter. Now if we do ifconfig, you can see the ETS0 is gone and that means it is down and to up it again in the command just change down to up and hit enter and it will up the network interface now it's time for setting up network if you use DHCP connection on your router and connect your PC or laptop to your router, it will automatically or say dynamically assign an IP address to your device. But if you want to assign a static IP, you can do it with this if config command. Now I am going to configure my wireless interface using a static IP address. So I'll type sudo if config, then I'll type the interface name and which is WLAN0 and I'll put the IP address what I want to assign for this device. And now it will assign the static IP to your device. 
To assign a network mask to an interface, you need to use the keyword netmask. And the command will be sudo if config, the interface name, then you need to type netmask, then you need to put the netmask. Now using this command, you can set up netmask on your interface. Also it is same to specify the broadcast. Type sudo if config, then interface name, then type broadcast and put the broadcast IP address and hit enter. Now like this you can configure or set up your device connect internet via the Wi-Fi router. Also we have command like net state and route. Net state stands for network static. It is a command line tool that displays network connection both incoming and outgoing. Also it shows routing table and many network interface and network protocol statistic. It is used for finding problems in the network and to determine the amount of traffic on the network as a performance measurement. Now the route command. Route command display or modify the IP routing table. When datagram arrive a router, the router must determine the best way to route them to their destination. Running route at the command line without any option, it will display the routing table entities. On your terminal, type route and you will get many information about the network routing tables. I will cover the details about these commands in Kali Linux Intermediate series, which will contain full networking parts. And on that series, I will discuss all of them in details. So guys, that's all for this video part. How to enumerate basic information about your system, user and kernel. After watching this video, you will know how you can find any user and Linux operating system information like name of your Linux distro, kernel version, release date, code name and many more. So let's start. Go to your Kali Linux machine. There are several different commands that can help you to find out the Linux distribution and version currently running on your system. In this video, I will show you every single command and using this command, you can easily find out information about your running Linux system. First, let's start with the user information. Suppose you are getting into a Linux system and now you want to find out the current user info. So this command will help you to get it. Now open up your terminal and using this text, you can easily understand who is the user. And for more details, check my previous video of keyboard shortcuts. Ok, now there is another method. On your terminal, just type who am I and hit enter. And it will give you the current username. Now if you want to find out the user ID of the current user, just type ID and it will give you the current user ID, group ID and other information. Ok, now to know the hostname of a system, just type on your terminal hostname and hit enter. And it will give you the hostname of your current system. Also if you want to change your hostname, you can do so. Type on your terminal sudo nano slash etc slash hostname and hit enter. And now you can change your hostname from here. Ok, now let's see all the commands to find out the version of Linux running on your system using the command line. On your terminal program, just type uname-a and hit enter. This will give you your current kernel version, but it might not mention the distribution. So there is other command to find it out. To find out what distribution of Linux you are running, try this command on your terminal. Type hostname ctl hostname control and hit enter. And it will show you more info like hostname, OS name, kernel version, architecture, and mode. Now, one of the best methods to get info about the system is using the OS release file. On your terminal, type cat slash etc slash os dash release and hit enter and you will get some output something like this and here you will get all the information like os name, os release, code name and other information. Now there is another method that gives you the most appropriate answer about the distribution name. 
on your terminal type cat slash etc slash issue and hit enter and it will give you specific information like the distribution name also there are more commands like this use this command cat slash proc slash version and hit enter and this command also will give you some information and the last command what we are going to see is the lsb release on your terminal type lsb underscore release then dash a and hit enter and also using this lsb release utility you can get more information about your linux operating system so guys that's all for this video hello everyone today in this video what i'm going to teach you that gonna help you very much if you are a self learner like me in this video i will share the way how i learn every basic things of kali linux and kali linux tools on my own so go ahead fire up your kali linux kali linux has over 600 pre installed penetration testing program and tools including armitage nmap set toolkit aircrack ng and many more and those tools are so much complicated if you are trying to use them by watching step by step guide videos then i can assure you that you will get confused yeah, it's true that if you try using any tools by watching step by step guide video, you'll get done what you want to do. But you cannot understand how it's done, what is in background or behind the scene. And here I use some trick to learn everything about any tools which are comes pre-installed with Kali Linux and try to understand the tools. So now let me show you how you can do so. Open up your terminal. Now the very first step. If I want to know about any tools in a one sentence, I just type on terminal what is and the tool name. Let's try it with nmap. And here you can see the terminal replay about the tools in one sentence. You can use this what is common with almost every tools of Kali Linux which are pre-installed. Ok, now you know how to find the basic info about any tool. Now let me show you how you can get some more details about any tools. Again on your terminal, just simply type the tool name and dash h. And you will get some more basic about the tools like basic usage, basic commands and the parameters. Ok, now it's time for deep dive. If you want to know everything about a Kali Linux tools, just type on your terminal man and the tool name. Let's try this one. And here you can see, I get every single information about the tool. Man stands for manual. Using this man command, you can read the tool's official manual. I know it's kind of annoying, but if you do this and go through it, I can assure you, you will be a master in every tools. Every day take one or two tools or program and become a master of that tool. And this will help you to become a professional and master in Kali Linux. Using this manual or man command, you can get every single details about any tools which are available in Kali Linux. So guys, that's all for this video part. I hope you like this video. So give it a big thumbs up and give your feedback about this course and rate it. And also let me know guys, do you really want more advanced series on Kali Linux or not? I would love to make video series on Kali Linux and advanced training. So guys, that's all about this Kalinux Essential series. Thanks for staying with us during this whole video series. Have a nice day and see you in the next video.